For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Welcome to this awakened generation with your host, Mazino Abraham Eboku. I was telling some of the brethren in the prayer meetings we had yesterday, do you know that in your houses, your little household, I gave them an example of many years ago, just around when my first son was born, I remember a young lady who came as a nanny to help us. And there were all kinds of things happening at the time. I was involved in business at the time, and I was at the verge of so many things, and it won't work, and all kinds of things were happening. One day, my wife and myself came together, and we prayed so fervently. We bound powers and spiritual wickedness and all kinds of things. The next morning, that girl disappeared. We didn't see her again. Till today, we have not seen her. We just saw her clothes have disappeared and she left one day. You know what she was doing all the way? She was sent by spirits who said, we initialize these ones. So, we go there, busy, morning till night, going to work, going to hustling, 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 hustling. So let us send some people. So in the house, there's none in there. How are you, uncle? How are you, auntie? You turn your back, they just blow you. <laughs> then you go to the room. Oh, let me watch CNN. Hey, see what's happening in Afghanistan. You be blowing grammar up and down. <laughs> see what's happening in uh, Kuwait. You know all is happening. Nothing you know is happening in the realm of the spirit. They will be in the bedroom. And then Lucifer will call them. Hey, Kemi, how far? Don't mind me watching CNN. <laughs> Let him be watching. <laughs> so, hey, Kemi, come and give me my food. They are blowing it on your food again. People who ought not to have power. Spirits who you are supposed to be teaching a lesson. Some of us do not even control the strong men over our household. They are controlling you. Every day from one hospital to the other. Every day from one thing to the other. And you're just a mess. You are sleeping. The reality of the spirit world has not yet dawned on you. The reality of what God has been trying to tell us. That first of all, you and I, in our lives, we are to display to principalities. Who is Oga? On a personal level, each and every one of us have been vested with such resurrection power that no power on this earth in fact jesus puts it this way in luke chapter 10 and 19 he said you will trample upon serpents remember revelation chapter 12 he says that old serpent the devil is cast out of heaven you will trample upon scorpions and upon all somebody say all all, all the power of the enemy and they shall by no means isn't it a terrible shame for the one with supreme power to be dominated by inferior powers? You know why that happens? Because the supreme power is asleep. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, I can't remember the exact scripture. It's, uh, it might be 11.3. I don't know why that comes to my mind. But it says, Woe unto a nation when your king is a child. I'm sorry to tell you, many of us are still children in the kingdom of God. We ought to be principalities over demonic kingdoms. 
But demonic kingdoms are principalities over us. Yes. Look at what is happening. We are talking of in our personal lives. Because the church, many of us Christians, we've gone to sleep. We do not understand that we are wrestling. And I told you last week, if you do not understand you are wrestling, then you are jesting. We are in a wrestle. The devil and his people, the principalities, they are here. Their work is to make sure. If you remember, you will hear in any country anyways. No government wants a parallel government. Talk less of a superior government. So the devil has designed a scheme. Neutralize them, then destroy them. Distract them. Make them go and focus on emptiness. Let them come and drink our wine. That's what the Bible says in Revelation 18. It says you are drunk with the wine of Babylon. Intoxicate them. Send them the lilies. Let them be weak so that they will not be able to do what Samson has been doing at other times. Take away the source of their power. That power is too strong for us. We can't compete against it, but we can neutralize them. I'm sad to tell you today, many of us are neutralized. We are not neutralized because the Bible says, quench not. You cannot quench the spirit spirit in the terms of somebody can come and quench spirit. But with each life, everybody the spirit identifies with, he comes with power. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is Holy Ghost and fire. The fire of the Spirit in your life can be quenched. So they quench that fire, that vibrancy, the power, and they get you distracted. Do you think it's an accident? Satan is systematically ensuring that Ephesians chapter 1, 18, 19, 20, you will not rise up to that place. Do you know what happens? I was telling the brethren, brothers yesterday. Imagine you and I. I come from a village. You have a village. You have your natural bloodline in that village. And you can't deny that. Imagine me. I wake up one day. I say, what are the demons? Because you see, powers represent deities that are worshipped in exchange for power. So they give men power. Go. And to give men power, they must offer them sacrifices. Go and see what's happening all over the world. Most of these places you hear, 100 people die, 100 people die. It's sacrifice. There's something they are looking for in that country. Oil is changing hands. One thing is happening. There's something. And blood must flow. Imagine in your own family, in your own village, you identify the deities and the powers there. The Bible says you have exceeding greatness. They're all under your feet. Do you know what's going to happen in this world if all of us take up our responsibility? If imagine in your environment where you live, you live in Okoko, Maiko, or you live in Ikoyi, and then you come there as a principality and say, in this place where the foot of soul of my foot has tread upon, I decree. No coven shall be established here. In the name of Jesus Christ. You begin to wield exceeding greatness of power. I take over the waters of this area. I dry the demonic waters. I release captives from the waters. I release them from the star and the moons. Every dungeon of darkness. You begin to bind the strong men. You begin to put principalities and powers in their place. You begin to put spiritual wickedness of this world. And the rulers, rulers of the darkness of this world, is look at the rulers of the dark realms. They are dark realms. Do you know that people get, um, uh, they, they get the, uh, powers from, from, from the water? We call them today mermaid spirits. Let, let me show you examples. Psalm 74, let's read from verse 12. Let me show you some things. Psalm 74, from verse 12. It says, For God is my king of old, 
walk in salvation in the midst of the earth. Thou, now listen to how he walks the salvation in the midst of the earth. He divided the sea by his strength. He breaks the head of the dragons in the water. Which dragon did you see in the water? I want to show you the mystery of spiritual warfare. These are rulers of the waters. How do I know? Go on. Thou break the head of Leviathan. Have you heard of called Leviathan? That's a demon. Some people say it's the devil. The devil's Lucifer. But we have Leviathan. We have Beelzebub. They are, made, they are about seven or ten of them. Devilish. They control realms. They control stars. They control, and, 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 and they, they have come to desecrate God's creation. They have built kingdoms. So even in the water, there are kingdoms in the water. He breaketh the head of Leviathan in pieces and gives him for, for meat to, to those who are inhabitants of the, this thing. Let me show you something else. Let me show you the mystery of crucifixion. I want to show you the spiritual warfare was happening when Christ was being crucified. But let me ask you a question first. Who crucified Christ? The Pharisees? The Bible says the Pharisees. Before I get there, Acts chapter 7. It says you, Acts seven fifty one. It says you stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. This is Stephen. Why do you always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers also did? Which, the, which of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted? And have slain them and shown, which shown before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have just now been the betrayers and murderers. Did you see this? When they heard it, they even went forward to kill him too. So he tells the Pharisees, you are the murderers. Amen. Same thing Peter says in Acts 3. He says, you have denied the holy and just one, 3, 14 and 15, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life. He was talking to men. Psalms and chapter 22. Let's look at Psalms 22 from verse 12. Please be patient. He says, many bulls have come past me. Can I show you this mystery? This is a prayer that Christ was praying. This is referring to the Messiah. And it is referring to what he was going through at the time he was going to the cross. Where did you see a bull? Which bull did you see? Well, let's go forward. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potshead. My tongue cleaveth to my jaw. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. Dogs. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I may tell of all my, all my bones. They look and stare at me. They part my garment amongst them. They cast lots upon my vesture. Oh, be not far from me. But, but oh my strength, hasten and help me. Deliver my soul from the sword. My darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. What's going on here? This is the prophecy of what Jesus was going through. What he was seeing. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 6. Tells us there, how be it we speak wisdom, listen, amongst them that are perfect or mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to nothing. Verse 7, go on. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, which God ordained before the foundation of all to our glory. Verse 8. Which... None of the principalities of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Are you seeing what is happening here? The crucifixion of Jesus Christ 
even though it was physically carried out by men, it was executed by demons, by principalities, by demonic powers. And in, 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 in Psalms, we see him calling them bulls. You see him calling them dogs and, and so on and so forth because he understood that there's a spiritual warfare going on. What is happening in the physical realm? There is a great mighty battle that is hidden behind the scene of physical eyes. Go through. Time will not permit me. But if you go through the Bible, in the Old Testament, you will even see where their eyes were not really opened to spiritual things as we are today. You see prophets, 400 of them, coming to prophesy. And then for a change, God decides to show us what's going on behind the scene. And then he shows us how that, you know, Ahab, the, 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 the king, is to be destroyed. Who is going to do this for us? Then a spirit comes. It is not a lying spirit. It's a spirit. We don't know it's a wicked spirit. The spirit said, I will go and I will become a lying spirit. And I'm going to, and you know what he did? All the prophets, one by one, they started to prophesy. All lies. But they were getting real revelation. It's just that something else that was not God was feeding them with that revelation. A whole generation of people can be misled, thinking they are serving God and they are not. This is the type of war that's going on in the behind the scenes. That the church can be so deceived, and it is not because the Bible calls it in 2 Timothy chapter 4. It says, doctrines of devil. Devils can come behind the scene, and they can disguise as angels of light, and they will give men revelation, and we will think that it is of God, but it's of the devil. This is what's happening behind the scene. Psalms and chapter 18 for 15. It says, then the channel of waters. This is a mystery that is unfolding here. Then the channel of waters were seen. And the foundation of the walls were discovered at their rebuke. O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. Keep going. Verse 16. He sent from above. So this is somebody locked anyways. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me because they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. Are you seeing what is going on behind the scene? You are seeing a man who is locked down. A man who is hindered and he is filled with calamity. But God comes to his rescue. And to rescue him, God has to uncover the secret of where they have locked him. That's why the anointing of Jesus Christ is, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to set the captives free. Do you know, Jesus did not wake up and just come and say, I'm coming to set captives free and started healing the sick. This is why you will see Jesus all night. You will not know what he's praying. Read the Psalms, you see a lot of prayers. You will see Jesus setting people free from the waters. Wherever they are locked, you will see him doing what he's telling us to do. To show forth the manifold power of God over principalities. To wrestle with them in the realm of the spirit. To bind the strong man so that you can take his plunder, his goods. What's happening to you and me, my brothers and my sisters? What's happening to us? We've left demons and principalities and powers to run wild all over the whole world. And we are sitting down and joining worldly people to play worldly games. Wake up, church. You sit down there. Devils are running wild in your house. In your environment, your, your locality. You go to the office. Everybody, somebody dies every year. Then you stop it right there. That's why God sent you to that office. You take authority. You take dominion. Wherever you are, they have to be under our feet. We loose the bonds of the wicked from the captives. Psalms chapter 81. I want you to be quick. I'm going to shoot two things. You give me Psalms 81 from verse 1 to 6. And then you give me uh, John chapter 10 from verse 34. Is it 82? 82, sorry. Okay, you know what? Start with John. 
John chapter 10, verse 34. In John 34, I want to show you this. I'm going to round up as I show you this. I begin to show you this. He says, Jesus has asked them. Now, Jesus, in, in, in verse 10, he has said, I and my father, we are one. That's what he said. So the Jews were angry. How dare you, a man, make yourself equal with God? So they wanted to stone him. So he now said to them, is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. Then go to 35. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Can you say of him whom the Father has sent, and sent to the world that you blaspheme? In other words, God has said it. You are gods. And that scripture is not going to be broken. Every child of God is a god. Is it not in, just flash this quickly and come back. That will be Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. Where God said to Moses, he said, you are going to be God. And the Lord said to Moses, see, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. Your brother will be your prophet. Do you know that we are gods? Listen, let me say it again. This is not Old Testament. I want to read it in the New Testament before I read it in the Old Testament. So because you'll get a bigger picture of the prophecy that's coming out. He says, has it not been said that you are gods? I need us to understand this. The call to dominate principalities and powers is the calling of gods or what revelations call kings. Psalms talks about it also in Psalm 149. He says, this is what the kings and the princes, this is, this is the honor you have to bind their princes with fetters of iron. Yes. Now, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. Who is this people he's talking about? He judges amongst who? This is the same scripture Jesus is talking about. Go on. How long will you just unju judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Verse 4. De verse 4. Deliver the poor and needy. Read them out of the hand of the wicked. They don't know. Neither do they understand. They are all walking in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said you are gods. That's what Jesus quotes. Verse 6. All of you are children of the Most High. This is the calling for children of the Most High. It's a calling to dominate. It's a calling to show forth the exceeding greatness of his power. Let me tell you something. In this place that we are at, every type of demon, I don't know what they call themselves, that is being worshipped and we are allowing them. It's indictment against us. Every shrine that exists in this place and we are not wrestling with them to knock them down and to cut off their power and to trample upon them and neutralize their effectiveness. Nullify all these charms they are putting all over the place. Nullify all these powers that they are wielding over the souls and take the captives and take the spoils and neutralize all these things. I'm telling you, blood is on our hands. God is counting on nobody else but us. Angels are not coming to this battle except we send them. They are ministry spirits now sent to help those of us who are heirs of salvation. It's Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. I've said you are God. Go and deliver these people. When we fast now, we fast for bread. We fast for our personal things. Isaiah chapter 58 from verse 5 and 6 and 7. What does it say? Isaiah 58. It tells us, is this not the fast I have shown to humble your soul and spread sackcloth Go on. Now look at six. Is this not the fast I've chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness. Undo heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free. Are you listening to this, people of God? There is a calling upon our lives. Satan has succeeded in locking us down to one small battle. Oh, I'm going to distract them. You know some of the battles we are fighting, they are distractions. They are distractions to make you keep fighting that little thing so that you will never go and contend with principalities. Guys, we have work. We have to wake up. We have to wake up. There's so much at stake. How many of us know the demons that are all around us? How many of us know... How many of us can perceive spiritual climates? How many of us can stand here and know and, and pray so that God will open your eyes to discern what is happening spiritually? And what you need to do. Why are we 
like kings who are children. Woe unto you if your king is a child. I'd like you to bow your head. I will continue next week, but and throughout this month of October, we're going to be praying that the Lord will bring us to a place of spiritual power and authority. And the church will rise up again to the place where we can manifest the truth of his exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. So that the principalities will be put in their place. So that men will be delivered from the dungeons that they are locked in. There's nobody else that will do it. There's nobody else that will do it. Jesus didn't come out and start laying hands on the sick just because he said, I have anointing. He sorted it out in the spirit realm first. He released them, all the sick people. He spent time and released them from the realm of the spirit. He set them free. And when it came out, it was just fulfillment of all righteousness. When it came out on the natural, it was just sorting things out. Oh God, help us. What's happened to the church that prayed through? We prayed through. We stayed down and wrestled with these powers until we got the breakthrough for our communities. Until we got the breakthrough for our families. Until the prince of Persia and the prince of Grecia were bound. And then the things from God came through. Pray, pray, pray for yourself. You will not be, you will not be neutralized though. We are only starting. We are just, this is the tip of the iceberg. You will not be neutralized in the name of Jesus. The Lord will not allow it anymore. Arise, O oh God, upon your people and over your people. Shakaleko radia karara. We break off all the shackles. We break off all the shackles. We cut off every cord that is not of God that is feeding you. Everyone here who is locked up to any addiction that takes you away from your place as a king, today we cut off those cords in the name of Jesus. It's time for you to get your place, your rightful place. It's time for your hair to grow again. Every Delilah in your life, we cast them away. We chase them with the wind of God's ferociousness in the name of Jesus. Every arrow that has been sent against you to distract you. Whatever kind of arrow. Every name that is named. I love that scripture in Ephesians. It says over principalities and powers. And over every name that is named. If that arrow has a name, I want you to address it by name. Every name that is named. That arrow of sickness. That arrow of disease. That arrow of failure. That arrow of destruction. That arrow of sexual sin. That arrow of whatever. Address it by name. And today it is cast away. In the name of Jesus. Every name that is named. Thank you for watching This Awakened Generation. We trust you've been inspired by this message. Tune in again to this channel at the same time to hear the heartbeats of God. Please send your testimonies, suggestions or inquiries to testify at tbrchurch.org or info at tbrchurch.org. We would love to host you this Sunday by 10 a.m. Visit our website or contact us on the following numbers. Jesus is coming soon, so stay rapturable.